Hello and welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Enlightenment TV. Here I'd like to share with you guests who have stories of overcoming difficulties or achieving impossible dreams. Well, today you're in for a treat because my guest had both. So it was hard to choose, but actually most people, they have difficulties that lead to them achieving outstanding things. So Today I have Karen. Karen, please introduce yourself. Yes, I am Dr. Karen Milano. I am a clinical psychologist and an infant family and early childhood specialist. And I help parents from pregnancy through the first five years simplify parenting so that they and their children can tap into that unlimited potential that they really have. Yes, I was, we were talking just before, like how align our work is because to start from infancy. And the episode uh, title is Cultivate Greatness, Start from Infancy. It's so good if we can start parenting from infancy, then there we solve so many problems that people have later on in life. And as you know, I like to start with your story. So can you share a little bit of your beginnings and as early age as you can? Yes, absolutely. So I'm actually natively from Bogota, Colombia. I was born in there and right around the age of seven, I moved to the United States, left my entire family that I love and care for so much and moved to the States. My dad's side of the family was here, but it was a smaller little cohort of people. And the U.S. was a really cruel place to a seven-year-old who did not speak a, wor a word of English. Oh, wow. Yes. So that's that's where it started. Um, I, from the age of five, I knew I wanted to be a doctor and a mom. And so coming to the United States, if you start thinking and connecting the dots, what a great place to actually try to achieve those dreams. And even though I had that really rough beginning, I, I've been very, very grateful that I've had a father that really saw and believed in me and encouraged me in a way that nobody did. And so that was incredibly helpful along that journey. And yeah. so, and the, the five-year-old, like that, that number was with me because you said that five-year-old, you knew you wanted to be a doctor and a mom and you work with parents with infants up to five years of age. Can you, I know it's hard to go back in time to tell me what you thought at five, but how do you think that idea came to you as a five-year-old to be a doctor and a mom? You know, I, I think I just had an aha moment here on camera because I've never made the connection that I was five when I wanted to be a doctor and that I focused my energy on zero to five. So thank you for bringing that up. I Honestly, that is such a great question. I just had this innate desire. I wanted to be a doctor. I didn't know what kind of doctor. And I just remember telling my parents, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. And they were like, okay, <laughs> you know, but I, I don't know exactly where that came from. Well, let me shift that. I, I believe that we innately have a knowing and an intuition and our, our, our human selves may not understand it, but innately there's this greater being a higher energy that knows and drives us and pushes us and nudges us to do things. And because we're little, when we're really tiny, we have the ability to connect to that energy in a way that maybe as we get older, it can be a little bit more challenging to do so. So if I think of it from that perspective, I was just connected to that energy to source driving and pushing me forward. Yes, and that's very well said, because I feel we do come into this life with our purpose imprinted on us. But then because of the society or parents, depends, everybody has different type of parents. Some are loving, but very demanding and moving the child in one direction that they are. If they are lawyers, they want their child to be a lawyer. And when we are allowed to be who we are, and I will ask you how you, what you teach parents, but if we can 
understand that we come with a divine purpose and we have it in us and a, a five-year-old can know their destiny to share a bit of my story i used to recite long poems on stage and i loved it so i have a picture of me and i love the stage and that's kind of now i'm informed that this is where i shine when i can where, where I can serve through my light and, and put it out into the world. And it was, again, very early age. I don't know if it was probably before six because it was in kindergarten. So if we teach the parents that they are guardians, but they are not to kind of push the children in a direction that they think with their logical mind, but to nurture what the child already knows, I think, the world it would be such a better place. Absolutely. Because I I see that a lot of times we believe that children are blank slates and we're supposed to teach them and fill that slate. But like you said, they are full of knowledge. I mean, if you think about it, a child learns to crawl and walk and talk and do all these things in such a short amount of time, but we never really think about how that's even possible. That's something so much greater than us. And they they come equipped with anything and everything they need. And if we can step out of the way and allow them to lead and nurture and allow for those connections to happen in a way that allows to really tap into that energy. Oh, my goodness. It is mind blowing what we can do and how our world would shift if we just did things a little bit differently. Mm, so that's why I'm happy you're teaching this. So then I know you became a doctor because you have the doctor title. Can you share that story? Absolutely. I I was driven, focused. There was no stopping me. There was a time when we had some financial hardships and there was, there was uh, news that I may have had to drop out of school. I don't even remember how, but I made it happen. I was able to pay for my studies and figure out ways to get there. And I did things the way I guess society would believe them to be. I got my degree in psychology. I got my doctorate. I got married. And then I wanted to be a mom. And so mm -hmm. that was so important to me. And I started having um, difficulty getting pregnant. So I struggled oh. with infertility at that point. And so that played a whole part in where I am today and why I'm doing what I'm doing as well. Mm. So you had when you, so you had like, I'm connecting the story. So you came to uh, the States, you were seven and then were you bullied in school or were you, was it difficult journey or you entered the doctor? Like was everything straightforward or you had difficulty? No, it was, it was perfect. No, I'm kidding. It was, <laughs> it was a struggle. Um, when I started school in the U.S., I remember I had what we call English as a second language, maybe twice a week. So I was immersed in, in, in a class with English speakers. I didn't speak any English. And so at the time, I think there were two or three girls. They were seven, eight years old as well that spoke Spanish. And so I got paired up with them so that they could help me through. And they did the complete opposite. They bullied me so incredibly hard that it was very difficult to get up and go to school every day. They would mock me whether I was in the classroom, outside of the classroom, on the playground. And it was a very lonely journey. I didn't, I didn't have any friends. I couldn't even speak to anybody. And I recall one girl that befriended me. And she was also someone that the rest of the class didn't really talk to either. So we ended up pairing up. And I'm so grateful for her because she was my one person that I felt I could go to and had some safety in. Mm. And during this time, like, were you discouraged like, were you ever discouraged about becoming a doctor or you stayed strong? No, I think it was the opposite. I think it fueled me. I, I wanted to believe that there was a possibility that I didn't have to live this way. And if anything, I learned English so well that I've even edited books. <laughs> so I've <laughs> even played as an editor and I can speak it and write it. 
probably better than most. And so I don't think that would have happened if I didn't experience those hardships, because I do believe that everything happens for us, not to us, and that those experiences transmute into something so beautiful when we allow them to. Yes, I can even I don't hear an accent on you. So it's like, beautiful, beautiful. So you got the the, the like you got to be a doctor. And uh, tell me about the motherhood now. So let's switch from the one dream to the other dream. So it's very interesting that you had this dream about being a mother, and then you experienced difficulties. Is there a mystery there? Like, why can you explain or can you share of your story? I think it was, I hate to say it this way, but it was meant to be that way. Because if I did not experience the infertility and the hardships and the pain that came with not being able to get pregnant every single month that I was not pregnant, it felt like somebody passed away in my life. It was such a hard time. It impacted my marriage significantly. It impacted my well-being. I became incredibly depressed. It, it felt like I didn't have much of a life force. But at the same time, I believed and I was curious. I'm like, there has to be something else. I've always been very curious. Mm -hmm. So when someone tells me, no, it's not that I have this like, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong. No, it's more like, hmm. Do I have to believe that story? Is it possible that there could be another alternative? And so I became curious and I started um, looking into Eastern medicine and alternative ways of healing. And this whole journey, when I started to work with, a, it was an acupuncturist who also changed my diet and put me on all sorts of natural herbs. Not only was I started, uh, I did I start to shift in the way my body was able to carry a child, but my headaches went away, stomach aches. I had all these ailments growing up as a child. I had a lot of medical issues and it, they were literally gone, back aches. And I thought it was sorcery. Like, what is this? <laughs> How come I didn't learn about this? And so once again, I became very curious to want to know, you know like, I take this and bring it into the world of mental health so that we can improve people's moods more naturally. Mm -hmm. So you were already a psychologist when you were going through that? And yes. did you try to kind of counsel yourself and did it work? All the time. <laughs> All the time. It's always more difficult when it's yourself because you cannot see the blinders. That's why I always encourage people to seek support whether whatever that looks like for you, because we have blinders, we believe that we can do things like, oh, I've got this one thing I noticed, for example, with parents, is that we say we're never going to repeat some of those things that our parents did. But those systems, those beliefs are so ingrained in our bodies. They're so automatic that in the moment of fight or flight, we we immediately revert to them and we don't even notice it. And so the same goes when you're experiencing a hardship, even as a psychologist, and I do all sorts of self work, I still have blinders. So I also work with somebody to help me see them so I can break through those blocks. Yeah, sometimes I feel it's harder because then you think, oh, I should know this because I it's my profession. So it's sometimes I feel like it's harder when you have the expertise. <laughs> Because you you think that, oh, I must be able to do it myself. And high achievers usually tend to do that. I used to believe that I had to work through that one. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. And I think many people can raise their hand. Um, when I look at you, I see the owl at your back is on your shoulder, almost like the way I look. Can you... Tune in and explain a little bit about the owl and how it helped your journey and what is connected with. Absolutely. So my grandmother was the most influential person in my life. I love her so dearly and I can feel her right now. So I'm, yes. I'm a little teary eyed. <laughs> um, since I was a little girl, that was probably the Hardest part about moving to United States was that I had to leave my grandmother behind. She stayed home and I came here. 
And so she, when she was in, in Colombia, she would write me letters and I would write her letters. Back then we didn't have all this technology and she loved two things, owls and she loved leaves. And so we would walk together and look at the, the patterns of leaves and the little veins on them. And so I would find really fun leaves and I would put them in my letters and I would send them to her. Mm-hmm. And so she passed away and she passed away and she didn't get a chance to meet my son. I was actually seven months pregnant. So I couldn't fly to Columbia to go visit her and I, she didn't get to see him. But when I was giving birth and I remember it like it's happening in this moment, what made it easy for me to get through that pain because I had a natural birth, no medication. She, I saw my grandmother literally in the room, in that presence. Like it was just her, me and my son. And that got me through. And I felt like, oh my gosh, she was the first one to meet my baby. (laughs) And so even though she wasn't present, she was definitely yeah. present. And so she's been such a an, an great part of my life and so influential. She was someone that whenever I was down and I feel I couldn't move forward, she would find a way. Even when my parents didn't agree with my whatever I wanted to do or the the, the route that I wanted to take and she believed in me, she would go talk to them. And so I wanted to make sure that she was a part of this business, that she was part of the soul of this business. So I wanted to incorporate her in one way or another. And because owls were so special to her, I incorporated her in my logo. So there's the owl, which represents my grandmother, but it also represents wisdom. It also represents to me that innate knowledge, that incredible ability to connect that we have to really be these divine beings that we don't realize that we can be. And so she symbolizes all of it for me. And she is very present in all that I do. Yes, because I, you know, like I usually follow a thread line in the episode. I don't ask random questions, but ever since you started the story about being five, the hour was like, I want to say something. I want to say something. So I had to ask the question in the middle of your story because it was calling to me so much that I feel it had to come through. And I would like it to end the story with the leaves, like to continue the story. I feel it's important. Yes, the the, the story of the leaves. Leaves, yes. So when I was in this journey of starting to think about the idea of having this business of really being able to go out there and help families in a way that they don't have that support. I remember I was in Arizona and I walked, I wanted to go get something to eat. I don't live in Arizona, so I didn't know the area, but I was called to this. I looked on Yelp and found this little restaurant and I drove up and I was a little hesitant to go in. I'm like, this is weird. It just looks like a house. Like that's no, I'm not going to go. But something told me go inside. So I went inside and in the backyard, it was an oasis. It was so beautiful. And then I understood, oh, this is why I'm here. That was very early on when I was really starting to learn about spirituality and tap into that spirituality and that energy. And so I was still quite skeptical. And so I could feel her presence, but I was not trusting my own gut reaction that that was her. I was like, no, that can't be. There's no way. And I sat down. And when I sat down, there were leaves all over the table. There were so many leaves, but they were brown, dead leaves. But I immediately thought of my grandmother. I'm like, hmm, I feel my grandmother. I see all these leaves, but I'm still skeptical. So I decided to talk to her out openly for the first time. I don't think I ever had tried that. And I said, okay, grandma, fine. If you genuinely are here, if your presence is with me, then I want green leaves to just start falling on my head because these are all dead. Of course, they're going to fall from the trees. And I let it go. Within 30 seconds, 
all of these green leaves started to fall on my head. And then I just burst into tears <laughs> at this restaurant by myself in tears. I could not believe it. And I still feel teary yet when I tell that story. And from that moment on, that was the moment, that defining aha moment where I believe there was something so much greater than me. And I've always believed in God, but this was a whole other level of understanding of source of energy and that we are divine and completely connected to it versus separate from it. Because I think in the past in my growing up believing in God as I grew up Catholic, that it was a separate, that God was over here and I was over here and I had to call out to God. Now I see it so different that everything is so intertwined and connected and that I'm never, ever, ever alone. I'm always guided. Separated. Wonderful story. And this is what I teach when I teach enlightenment and because people say like how you were an engineer, now you do energy healing, like how's that going to work? It's through those experiences that you share with the leaves, with the feelings that we, by experiencing them, then we know it because it's one thing to learn it intellectually and it's another thing to know it, to, to know it's it's there. Nobody can deny what you had felt in that moment. So it's a great story. And you said it's a defining moment. So now I want you to turn that defining moment into how the story went when it started to get better. And I know there is a little bit more of worse before it got better, but tell a little bit of that. Absolutely. So from that moment on, I really started tapping in tapping into energy, tapping into source, tapping into whatever it is you believe in. That's what I started to tap into. And that started, I was actually going through a divorce. And that was a very difficult time in my life. My son was only what, one, two years of age. So it was a very difficult, rough time. And it was in that darkness that I was able to really shift and start to connect and start to see something so much greater that I didn't have to sit with these feelings, with these emotions, that it was a choice that I actually am able to create from a place and just shift the energy around it. Again, that things happen for us, not to us. And it just opened the door to spirituality and my life completely completely changed once I opened the door to spirituality and I started incorporating it, not just into my life, but in my business, it became really the soul of who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. And what I teach, it's a foundation of what I teach is that we are divine beings. And that we all have unlimited potential, we are worthy, we are so loved. And all these stories that we tell ourselves that keep us from becoming the beings that we want to become are just stories. They're just beliefs that keep us from really stepping into the authentic us that we are. So that to me is, was a big shift because I feel like I was living my life on auto mode. Mm -hmm. It was, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't fulfilling mm -hmm. the way it is. There was always a, a void. And now I feel like whether I am experiencing severe pain or extreme joy, there's a purpose and I can connect the dots, which I did, never did that before. Yeah. And so that really shifted my path as to how I live my life personally and how I work professionally. Yes, that's a, such a great point because when we can take whatever is happening and find the blessing in it, then we can understand again that life is happening for us, not to us. It's it's a very good way to turn the mirror and to find the blessing. And I feel like when you heal and then you find the blessing, then you can be a blessing to others. We're kind of running out of time in a sense, but I really wanted to find out about how you were working in your career and then you switched to your business and how you merged the two like what you learned as a 
as a psychologist and then what you learned through your life experience and what you offer now to parents? Absolutely. So I actually was working for LA County Department of Mental Health for 15 years and in um, community mental health for, for 20 years. So not too long ago, I left that. And it was it was fulfilling in the sense that I was working with families that a lot of them had gone through some sort of abuse. So I worked alongside child protective services, but it got to a point where because of the systems, very systemic issues, I was not fulfilled. I was trying to start this business and really focus on zero to five because I saw the pain that my clients were going through. It was incredible to see how they were getting younger and younger and younger and sicker and sicker. And I just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I have to do something to shift that. And I felt like we were just a band-aid, often not really doing much. And I mean, I know there's another way. I know there is. And there were, because it's the systems, it could be really hard to really implement what I really believe could be helpful. Because a lot of times people are very closed off to new ideas. And so I was going through the motions at work. I had a paycheck, but I was so sad and unfulfilled. And I realized, oh my goodness, it's because this isn't where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be really focusing my energy on pregnancy in the first five years, because that's where I can make the biggest impact. That's where I can help parents during a time when they're feeling lost and overwhelmed and confused because you literally have a child and you say, here you go, go home, good luck. You read a couple books, you might take a couple courses, but everything is incredibly disjointed and disconnected. There isn't one place where you can go and not only just get the support and understand what's the best way to parent or the most ideal for you, because I don't think there's one way. And also receive the support that you need because you're lost and confused. And so I decided to literally jump off the cliff <laughs> and go on that blind faith because I know that I can tap into that energy. And I quit my job so that I could focus full time on Lumi Tot and be able to help as many people as humanly possible because I just didn't feel like I wasn't. Not only was I unfulfilled, but I didn't feel like I was helping anyone in anymore. Yes. yes, because we like the sooner you can help, like the better it becomes, right? Because there's like the problem grows with the years. Yes. So if you can if you can help it early on, that's great. Like, you know, I used to, I mean, I still work, not used to. I still work with adults in my business. And they were like 50s, 60s, and they still struggle with uh, problems from childhood. So that's why I came up with this project for youth. But you're doing it even <laughs> earlier. So that's amazing. So what are kind of few things that you're offering to parents? And then I also understood you have something that they can download. Yes, absolutely. So I offer comprehensive online programs. And I say comprehensive because I don't believe that you can find those. I see these things. Become the best parent in 10 weeks. No, it is a journey. It is a process. So I teach a lifestyle. I take Eastern medicine and Western and I bridge them together. And I created a method that you implement as a lifestyle as early as the moment of conception. And when you do this, you are now intentionally wiring the brain. You're intentionally building the architecture of the brain so that we're not growing up with these core beliefs that we have for example, unworthiness, uh, being unlovable, all these things that we have as adults that I know all of us struggle with. If we, right from the beginning, when they're starting to set, when they are become set in stone, we can change that. And then we can set the environment for the brain and body to thrive. So it is a combination. Everything's online, but I integrate it with a process that's very transformative. So you're not just getting knowledge. You're literally transforming from the inside out your family. And my goal as well is for that to trickle into the community so that we can really make an impact on a macro level. And, and I really thought about all the things of, of my many years working. So I bring you all my experience into a one place where it feels easy and make parenting easier. 
and really allow children to thrive. Yes, I, I read, I think, in your bio that you want to switch from the parenting is hard, life is hard, mm -hmm. into, into having more ease and flow. And by doing this and by focusing, and, and parents are so loving, they will do anything for their ch child. But I feel like going through this process, they're also doing something for themselves, unknowingly, maybe. Uh -huh. and you also teach parents how to massage their children. I don't know. I just feel like that also wants to come through because it's not all psychology is also touch. No, touch is so incredibly important. It is one of those senses that is most developed in a child. And so when you become a parent, you're often feeling so lost. You don't know how to do anything, but infant massage, you can learn before your baby's even born. And it is one of the best ways to bond with your child. I hear a lot of parents say, okay, I'm present with my child, but my mind is somewhere else. And so that is one of the uh, techniques that I teach where you literally get lost in the moment. So not only does it help your little one, but it helps you find your alignment, your balance. It reduces stress. It helps with sleep. It helps with colic, with gas, with pain. So it has so many benefits and not enough people know about it. So I'm bringing it to the online world so that more people can actually learn it and implement it. And you can use it for years to come. My son is 10 and I still give him his massages. So they're very specific in using acupressure points. And we, I teach you from beginning to end how to do that in the comfort of your own home. That's lovely. And there is a, will be a link with something to download. What's the title of the yeah. download? So we have eight tips so that you can help your child tap into their unlimited potential, where I give you tips based on my method where we look at those eight dimensions of health and how you can start implementing that into your life so you can start having that lifestyle that allows for the brain and body to thrive this is amazing it was an amazing episode i feel like as you know like i make the episodes short so people have time to watch it but i felt like i could have gone and gone with you <laughs> it is my pleasure to share with you this story of this incredible woman being soul that at five years old she knew she wanted to become a doctor and a mom and now she works with infants I think is no coincidence I love that you made that connection on this show that's my gift to you I hope you enjoyed the show and I'm going to see you next week for the next episode